Hello everybody, Flick here. It's time for yet another Let's Look At. And today we are taking a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider by Eidos, or Edos, however you pronounce it, Montreal. Uh, it's not a first impressions video. I have finished the game. We did it on stream and there are VODs of it if you want to get caught up and don't plan to play it for yourself. We are going to be jumping into my completed save file. 61.33% completed is most of the main story and every side tomb puzzle dungeon that I found that I could access at the time because sometimes you have to backtrack once you are, once you get certain equipment unlocks which I never bothered doing past a certain point in the game. Uh, I will be going back to one of the first areas but there might be some incidental dialogue that might spoil things. I don't think there will be but there might be so just a, a general warning for that before we jump into our save and talk a little bit about the game. It is available now. Uh, this is a review copy I received as well directly from Square Enix just to make that clear as well. Uh, I will be linking the Steam Store page below, and it's full price, forty-four ninety-nine in British pounds. You obviously have to check out the Steam Store page for your regional equivalent. And it's sitting on mostly positive at time of doing this video and of last night when we just finished it proper, for me anyway. But this is the third Tomb Raider remake, and it carries on the kind of through line that has been in these remakes of Lara Croft versus the enigmatic trinity which is kind of it's the tomb raider universe's version of the templars i guess if you want to go for the assassin's creed comparison or the illuminati they're, they're ruling the world from the shadows kind of they're looking for a way to reshape the world in their desired image and this is kind of like the culmination of that story it's not really that strongly hinted at in the first one from what i remember i think it's just towards the tail end that you learn about trinity the second one they're much more kind of in the center focus of the story and then that carries on in this one as well this is kind of like our main hub for the game that we're passing out to here and there are some fantastic looking visuals in the game the majority of the game is set in peru but you also go to um, south america and ooh, where else there's other places but most of it is set in this very very dense lush jungle and there is some just fantastic vistas that you can just stop and enjoy what i will say though that is interesting is that also, oh, I, I should probably forewarn you that my, my feelings on the game are not particularly positive. Beyond that, that's kind of like why I'm starting with the stuff I like. The vistas are fantastic. The majority of the aspects of the gameplay, which sadly have not changed since the last two remakes, it still works, and the puzzle dungeons are still generally fun. Speaking of which, I actually needed to stay where I was and teleport back to the start of the game where I believe there was a puzzle dungeon I missed because I needed a certain bit of gear I now have. So I'm going to go back there and try and do that puzzle dungeon as I talk. But uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, regarding the visuals in particular. The game looks good. The game looks fine. There's performance issues I'm going to talk about later that might be specific to the PC version, which I should have mentioned. I'm playing the PC version using a 360 controller though. Uh, but if you go watch the very first VOD of this I did, it's a bit hard to tell because of like Twitch plus YouTube compression by putting the VOD over. I'm not sure if the VOD itself is still available on Twitch or will be by the time you hear this, but if you watch the first VOD I did, which was pre-release, and then you watch VOD 2, one of the first things I said when I started VOD 2 was that I felt like the visuals had declined. It felt like the day one patch had scaled back the visuals. Oh, there's where the two places we can go to. Wait, unknown location? That doesn't sound right. Anyway, I'm trying to work out where the start of the game was. I think, the yeah, there we go. And I think that's the tomb I haven't done. I can't quite move the, the mouse, but we'll see. So yeah, I feel like the, they brought back the visuals a little bit with the day one patch. And I wonder if that is in connection to the performance issues I was having. I think a lot of the reasons why I'm focusing on the negative for Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a little bit of like new Tomb Raider fatigue. And that's largely the game's fault and it's very surprising just how quickly they adopted the Assassin's Creed Ubisoft model of churn a game out every year basically the same game over and over this is more of the same and it has been for the last two but it was a bit more forgivable in the, the second remake third time it's all the same again to the point where the story beats are exactly the same I don't want to go into too many details for spoilers but Almost step for step. Oh, we have done this one. I remember where this is. Step by step, the story beats are identical to the previous games, right down to there being an enigmatic third faction that starts out kind of elusive and scary, but then might kind of be on your side after that. 
It's exactly the same as the Oni in the first remake, and then the... I can't remember what the tribe was called in the second one, but exactly like them as well, where, like, the feral tribe members of the... whatever they were called, the, the Prophet's Army in the second one. It's the exact same thing. I, I could see what was happening coming from a mile off because it was the exact same beats as the last two games, and that is unacceptable on any level as a storyteller to just do the same thing again. There's a tomb there. Let's mark that and go do that tomb. Because I'm pretty sure I couldn't get in before. I marked it. There it is. Somewhere over here. So, basic buttons, again, are the same. Lara's main weapon is the bow, of which she can make different arrow types. She can dodge with B, she can attack with Y, she can stealth. Stealth has been expanded a little bit in this one, in that you can cover yourself in mud and that lets you hide against walls. Oh, collectible I missed. We can hear a bit of Lara's voice acting. I don't know who that is. Scottish history was my thing, not rest of the world history. All right, now I need to work out how to actually get up there. Perhaps up here and to the left. Other than that, you do have a range of an array rather of guns that you get access to. Oh, this is mud. I don't think I can get up there. That's another thing. It's very difficult to sometimes work out where you can and can't go. You do still, in general, want to focus on the bow. That's kind of become her signature weapon more so than her dual pistols, for whatever reason. I suspect part of the reason is that the gunplay is so unsatisfying. There's very little blood, if any at all. The enemies are bullet sponges, yet you can still just take them out with one arrow to the head. It's very, very strange. It's just... Oh, also, I'm getting encoder overloaded warnings. That is down to the game's performance issues. It might also exp ah, here we go, here's the bit I was looking for. for also might explain some of the other performance issues, because I am streaming, obviously, when I was playing this, so maybe the streaming software just was overloading it a little bit, but I'm currently using, yeah, like 42% of my CPU. That is very strange. That implies some kind of memory leak, because usually when I'm streaming the game, I'm using between 10 and 15% CPU. And we're sitting at, oh, it went to 30 there and then down to 15. Yeah, there's something wrong with this in the in the background. I don't know if it's poor programming or what, but the performance issues you're seeing, they're not usually as pronounced. Maybe it's something to do with the area I'm in. Anyway, let's go in here. But very frequently, the cutscenes would have issues where the picture would stutter a little bit and then the sound would be one to two seconds ahead for the rest of the cutscene. And that's not down to, like, CPU performance, and even if it was, I'd be insulted given how good my PC is. But, yeah, something is, is very up with this. Alright, I guess that was meant to happen. Since this is a puzzle dungeon, we probably won't be seeing any of the combat, so we just have to take my word for it that it feels very unsatisfying if you're using anything other than the bow. Again, if you don't care about spoilers, you can watch me play it and see for yourself. I went very gung-ho at the end just to get it over with. Alright, so our goal here is to raise this statue. That's a fun name. Lara's voice actor, uh, actress being able to pronounce all these Mayan names is very impressive. She does it well, at least to my ear. Now, this is some way, uh, something I can kind of point out, one of the good things about the game. So you do that, if you've got your difficulty set to normal, Lara will give you a general hint of what you're supposed to do. We want that down there, obviously. But what you can do is go to the options and individually decide what difficulty you want the combat, exploration, and puzzles to be. So for instance, we drop the puzzle down to easy, it's going to show us an additional step on how to solve this puzzle. If we do this again. So therefore, we have to do something very specifically with that. I'm not going to leave that on because it does make things a little too easy. I tried it, literally the final puzzle in the game before the like one hour finale. I just wanted done with it and the game was like deliberately obtuse with the solution and fed you wrong information, which I didn't like. Hmm. Well now that I know I need to do that, do I need to shoot the rope? No. We do need to get up there. Huh, maybe I should have left it on. Oh, this is another good thing to mention, though. It's been a bit of a problem with the previous two remakes as well. That's where I came in, isn't it? Oh, wait, no, it's not. 
but it's the game does not good, do a good job of always making it clear where it expects you to go at any one time. It does a very, very bad job at certain sections of the game, making it seem like Lara knows what she's doing and kind of leaning over like, yep, that's the way I want to go, only for her to plunge to her death. And sometimes when you're using like the, the grapple to hit onto something or just to grab a ledge, sometimes she just doesn't grab it and then that implies to you, oh, that wasn't what I was supposed to do, I guess. You try it again, do the exact same thing, and it just works th this time. It's like sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. I feel like this is going to break or something. Uh, or not. And I did do a little bit of digging with the help of Twitch chat into like what happened. Because even if this was all just the same story beats again, the quality doesn't seem to be the same as the previous two games. And that surprised me greatly. Apparently, Edis Montreal was kind of like just handling this one themselves and being overseen by Crystal Dynamics. And I wonder if that's to blame. Obviously, we'll, we'll never know. But it certainly comes across. See, fundamental gameplay flaw with this kind of thing. Uncharted learned this nice and early. You only make your character lean in that manner, not if it's possible to do, but if it's right to do. Very basic thing that they didn't think to change, leading to a lot of confusion. So teach us some language, maybe? Which is a returning mechanic again. So another thing to mention, 63.66% done of the game. I don't know what that is, but sure, let's go with yes. That's above half the game done. It's all the main story, obviously, and as much of a side stuff as I could do at the time I found it. That took me 10 hours. The game is short compared to the last two. And that leads me on to, sadly, another complaint, but one I feel like I do need to go into detail about. The game, specifically towards the end, has a lot of forced stealth. And very specifically, there's this, it's a video, oh hello Windows 10, there's a video game trope where the hero loses all their gear and you have to sneak through because if you try and fight them, the enemies will overwhelm you because they've all got guns, etc, etc. There's a bit like that that goes on for way too long. Lara just has a knife. Oh, I think I have to lift this up. Lara's just got her knife or her pickaxe, whatever the hell it's supposed to be. And you're sneaking through an area, taking out Trinity soldiers as best you're able because you've had your gear lost. That's fine. It's a trope. It's not a trope I like, but it's a trope. Now then, how do we pull this up? But, walk up to a guy who's using thermal vision and a shotgun. Stealth kill them. Lara then carries on as normal. She has a perfectly good shotgun sitting on the floor, no longer being used by the now corpse that she made. It's unforgivable that Lara just gets temporarily stupid when the game requires her to be. And then she has to just go through that area, I can't carry killing in stealth with a knife, guys with guns over and over, never once thinking, huh, these gun things are, they're, they're pretty useful. Maybe I should use those to, like, kill the people instead of having to try and force myself to sneak up on every single one of them individually. But no, she doesn't because she's been rendered temporarily dumb. And it's infuriating. I need to move this somewhere. Underneath that. Oh, underneath that to make it get grabbed. That's what I need to do. And you might be thinking, well, well obviously, one, it's a video game trope, but... Where's that pulley going? That pulley is going to this. Can I pull this? I need to unlock the counterweight on the left side of the monument. Oh, wait, I can hold this. Yes, it's a video game trope. Yes, it's it's a thing that's been done many times before. Oh, it's interesting. It's still missed. But now what will happen if I push this back? But do you know how I got through that stealth section? Because I couldn't be asked doing it stealthily. So what I did was I ran. Because the game wouldn't let me take a gun and was expecting me to just use my knife to kill all these heavily armed men, I just ran. And Lara can take quite a fair beating on normal difficulty, and when she can't, you just quickly hold R1, press A, 
and heal yourself on the spot. It, it takes like a second to kick in, but it's a full heal. You can also use B to make a defense thing, so you take less damage. Just run through. But the developers thought of that because they don't want you running through that first stealth section. They want that first stealth section to last a while so that the game doesn't seem short. So what they did was there's certain choke points where if a guard even suspects you are there, Lara will forget how to walk through doors. And that is unacceptable. And embarrassing, quite frankly. Ah, we've got to go up here. And I don't know who the blame for that lies with, specifically. We can guess, we can assume, but we'll probably never know. Also, the gruesome death scenes are back, which always seemed a little off to me. 23rd of May. Over a month has passed since our expedition departed from Quiaba. We have consumed our provisions methodically thus far and continue to be in high spirits. Father's age shows when we're on foot. A few times now I have caught Rally looking over his shoulder and back at us to make sure we're still keeping up. Father always returns a look with a smile and saying he'll soon be the one in the lead. Luminara's voice actor, Jonah's voice actor. They're all good, they're all fine. Oh shit. The rope snapped. The rope snapped. Ah, I see. See, you said the rope snapped, but the rope has not snapped, is the thing. So I'm, I'm just curious why you think the rope has snapped. Uh, if I can't push that far enough. I mean, obviously I can get this so it's stuck in an upright position, but it requires this to do it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Because you can presumably move this on an axis. I was too busy blathering and was missing the obvious, which is often the way with the puzzles in this game. So it's done that, so that means it's going to grab it. Because we want this over there to do the other side, obviously. There we go. We've done it. So now I just need to ride the thing again. And some of the puzzles are well crafted. Some of them are definitely not. It's very inconsistent quality all in basically every aspect. For instance, those high CPU usage messages. Is this, is this stuck? Yes. Good. I haven't, oh wait, no, I was going to say I haven't seen any. There we are, they're back, so I don't know. A game that looks like this should not be having as much strain on a fantastic CPU as it apparently is. I'm playing games that are better looking than this that do better. Can I stick that from here? Yes, I can. Now, I wonder if the thing here is to apply my weight to this to make it drop again. No, Lara is not weighing enough for this. Should be able to raise the ladder completely. Now, can I make this jump? Nope. I have to go from the other side. <laughs> like, for instance, I've been playing Assassin's Creed Origins, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I would say both those games look better than this. So, it might just come down to an engine thing as well, but... I had none of these issues with the second Tomb Raider remake, which I played on stream recently. And I, I played the first one just in my own time. I don't remember if I replayed it on stream or not. But that was fine too. Let's see what's in here. And it's a bit early for... Uh, it's a bit early for new Tomb Raider fatigue to set in on the third game. But it's their own fault. Like the first remake, I would absolutely still recommend. The second one, to a slightly lesser extent, I would still recommend. Just kill a passing Any spider for no reason. Yeah, sorry, Lara, we don't need to listen to that. It's too many words. But Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I would not recommend. The the through line story with Trinity is uninteresting. Okay, and then this should be locked in place, right? Hope this ladder isn't as rotten as it looks. That should take us to where we need to go. And that might be the end of this, which would be perfect timing. If you want to see the end to the Trinity storyline, then you have to play the game or watch it. Pick it up in a sale. Forty four ninety nine in British pounds is way too expensive of an ask. Is that a person?
No, it's a recipe, so it's an unlock. Clemens Heart. Health regenerates more quickly. Well, that would have helped with those god-awful stealth sections that I just decided to run through. And this is my quick way back. So you can unlock that via the skill tree, which you can get from campfires. We'll go take a quick look at that, and that'll be the last thing we do. To reiterate, just or to finalize my thoughts, the core gameplay is fine. It's implemented worse. The, the game stutters. The sound stutters. I feel like the quality got worse after the day one patch, but I can't prove that specifically. Windows 10 disagrees. The gameplay makes some terrible decisions, especially late in the game, that I believe are purely to artificially increase the length of the game. And in general, it was just very unsatisfying. There's also one overly long flashback to Lara as a kid that went on way too long and was unnecessary because it was rehashing story from the second one. You also do kind of have to still get over Lara being Little Miss Murder Everyone. But you've had to do that for all these remakes. It isn't just wildlife she picks on anymore. There we go, and we should be back out to camp, more or less. I believe down there is where we started. Yeah, the puzzle, the side puzzle dungeons are still well thought out in terms of progression. They give you a quick way back. It feels stylish to to get back where you started once you've successfully done it. And it's worth doing because it does unlock stuff for you. That said, I got through the game without needing that additional health regeneration. But I would have liked it. Would have been handy for one specific awful section. Let's take a quick look at the skill tree. You can still upgrade your equipment as well, weapon unlocks. Although if you pre-ordered the game, you get given an uh, overly powerful version of each weapon. So you don't need to care about upgrading any weapons, which is a shame. There's a, no, that's a skill we unlocked. Where's the one we just got? There it is. Acquired. So actually, yeah, you just have it. You don't have to buy the ones you get from dungeons. But these ones with like a locked thingy, uh, the locked tombstones, that is. You have to do challenge tombs to get those unlocked. But you have a wide variety of skills that you can access without necessarily needing them. And then here is the gear. As I said, weapon upgrades, you can also upgrade your clothes, and you can, if you want, do either like individual parts which have perks, or you could do full suits, and there's a bunch of unlockable ones, including some hilarious ones, might I add, which are this one, this one, that's Tomb Raider 3 or 4, that's Tomb Raider 2, and then with the bomber jacket, which is kind of fun. So yeah, you can mix and match, you can unlock more costumes. That's the one I was mostly using, just because you got additional ammo and stealth kill bonus XP, which is what I was doing most of the time. But yeah, this has been a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I don't recommend it. Sorry. I recommend the other two, though. They're still worth playing, even if you don't want to play this one. The other two, as far as like self-contained stories, especially the first one, a bit less the second one, they still get a recommendation, but this one, sadly, does not. Keep an eye on it, though, if you are interested. Maybe it'll get patched again, and the performance issues will get fixed or anything else like that. I don't know if that exists on console, that's something to look for in the comment section of this video. Maybe if anyone's been playing the console version, pitch in with your feelings on the performance. And keep an eye on the Steam store page if you want, which I have linked below. Thank you for watching, and ta-ta for now.